Something that's very useful here is to also label, so here's the alpha carbon that attacked this former carbonyl. Let's also label what was the, al what was the other alpha carbon that was doing the attack. Where's the other alpha carbon that did, for, that did the first Michael addition? That must be this right here, right? Because this used to be the carbonyl, so this must have been the alpha carbon that did the Michael addition. So let's label that again. And where's the atom that it attacked? This must be the atom it attacked in the Michael addition. So how, how, how did this look different before the Michael addition? This used to be unsaturated. Remember that in the Michael addition, you have to attack an alpha beta unsaturated. So this um, bond over here used to be a double bond before the alpha carbon attacked over here. This is important if you want to do a synthesis. Very likely, you'll see a problem where you have to use Robinson annulation for a synthesis, and that's very difficult for most people. It's very difficult for most people to look at this picture and figure out what the two starting fragments were. We learned a trick. Do you want it? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Any trick will help. OK, so if you start with like this, right. you want to know what you got it from. Right. You erase this part and turn this into an oxygen, and then the one that was across from it, make that the alpha beta, and like that's not the bond right there. So you end up with this, which then you add a hydrogen there. Okay. Yeah, that seems like that's right. That's basically the same thing I was just, you're just doing, you're just uh, putting into practice what we were just talking about here. But if that works for you, that's fine. So the key thing that you're talking about there is, again, realizing that previously, so what were the bonds that didn't uh, 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 exist in the starting materials? This bond and this bond. So here's where you would put the two squiggles, where the alpha carbon attacked here and where the alpha carbon attacked here. And just like you said in your trick, this over here used to be a carbonyl. So you'd have to put an oxygen over here. Uh, and uh, this over here used to be the alpha beta unsaturated portion. So you'd have to put the double bond over here. This is the part that I think people tend to forget the most, that part of the, um, that the Michael acceptor used to be alpha beta unsaturated. So we have to remember that this used to be alpha beta unsaturated. So that trick is fine. Uh, that's, uh, that works for you. That's basically what we were pointing out up here. So how do you know when something might have been produced by a Robinson annulation? Well, when we have a cyclohexenone, this is cyclohexenone that is alpha beta unsaturated. So when we get a cyclo, uh, a six-membered ring with a carbonyl that's alpha beta unsaturated, there's a good chance that was made from an, uh, a Robinson annulation. And we just talked about how you can figure out what the starting materials six were. Six-membered ring. Yeah, basically this. If you see something that has this in it, a six-membered ring with a carbonyl and alpha beta unsaturated, we could call that a 2,3-cyclohexenone. Um, 2,3-cyclohexenone because the unsaturation is between the number two and the number three carbons, so to speak. But basically, if you see a ring that looks like this, maybe that was made out of a Robinson annulation. What I just gave you here is the simplest possible Robinson annulation problem because I gave you the simplest possible starting materials. Um, there was nothing here except what we needed for the Robinson annulation. These are usually harder because there's usually plenty of other carbons. So it's very important here to start using numbers to make sure that you're connecting carbons in the correct way and that you're not adding or dropping carbons. For a complicated mechanism like this, it's really helpful just to number everybody so that we're not going to be adding or dropping carbons. Okay. Should we try a more complicated example of this? Sounds good.
just draw the mechanism or like the product? Uh, let's see. I think we should do one more example of the mechanism. But eventually you want to know how to get go straight to the product too. But let's do one more example of the mechanism. Can show the mechanism for the heat, for the OH falling off? Uh, your choice. You can show it, or if you want to, you can show it. I'm going to run out of room again, but that would be a good thing to show. So remember, that's the second step of an aldol condensation. If you're really having trouble with that, you might want to consult the handout again for the second step of the aldol condensation. But remember that we're doing a category three here. One thing that might help is to label the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon that got attacked. So, so far what's happened is we've done category one and the alpha carbon has attacked the carbonyl yeah. carbon once. I can draw the product, I just don't know the mechanism. Right. So the next step is, remember, how did the alpha carbon attack the uh, carbonyl the first time? It deprotonated and then attacked. So in order to attack a second time, it has to deprotonate again and then attack. 